I'm Anthony Elliott and I'm the author of The Culture of AI, a new book with Routledge. I've published quite a lot of books with Routledge previously, so very excited to have this new book. It's the result of four years research, been working away with an international team on uh, a lot of the research. 2018, as I see it, is a world of immense change, uh, and no, arguably nowhere more so today than in terms of the digital revolution. In the culture of AI, my new book, I refer to this revolution as involving, above all, a technological tsunami. And by that, I'm really referring to the um, linked forces of artificial intelligence, of increased automation, of advanced robotics, big data, uh, machine learning, deep learning, the Internet of Things, which is fast becoming the Internet of Everything. All of these changes, I think, need to be seen as operating together. And one of the most important points that I'm trying to make in the book is that the science and the technology is there. It's we're in this world now of these stunning technological advances. But one of the really big questions is, you know, how do you and I as individuals try to react to and cope with these changes in our everyday life? Because I think that's where many of the, the really big sociological questions arise. So there are lots of people, I suppose, that are getting increasingly worried about AI and its, its impacts. And that's understandable because from one angle, you've had some of the you know, world's best minds come out and issue fairly dire warnings about this brave new AI world that we're going into. So the late Stephen Hawking argued that AI might actually spell the end of humanity. Figures like Elon Musk saying that you know, it's a grave existential threat. So it's not surprising that, you know, in our everyday lives, people are starting to say, wow, where is all of this going to and what's it going to lead into? I actually think some of those estimates, um, it's not so much that they're, that they're entirely wrong, but certainly in the book, The Culture of AI, I'm trying to encourage readers to look at this debate from a slightly different angle. I mean, yes, the debate about ethics is very important, yes, the debate about things like the militarization of drones. That's obviously the whole question of killer robots. I mean, these are really frightening possible social futures. But it seems to me that a lot of what actually is now occurring in terms of the rise of intelligent machines is likely to affect us on the ground in much more mundane ways. So an example of that is the debate over employment. There's a huge debate, obviously, about robots taking our jobs. Perhaps I think one of the best studies came out of Oxford University where they looked at up to, I think it was over 700 professions that are likely to be impacted by robots. And it's a really interesting list because if you look at the jobs that are most likely to go to robots, um, you know, you've got um, accountancy and um, solicitors and a whole list of professions that one would not necessarily have thought that would be high up on the list. Jobs that are least likely to go to robots by contrast, um, for example, hairdressing seems to be a fairly safe profession and it's not because a robot can't be programmed to cut our hair, it's because we don't want a robot to cut our hair, whereas it seems that we'd be quite happy to have a smart algorithm take care of our tax return rather than deal with an accountant. The debate about AI has often been represented as a development that's you know, set in the future. And I think Hollywood has played a big role in much of our thinking here. So this is very much conception of AI framed in the image of you know, the arrival of super robots and at what point will we all become cyborgs or uh, the arrival of the technological singularity. When will non-biological intelligence equal and outstrip biological intelligence? In the culture of AI, one of the points I'm arguing for is that Hollywood's led us up the garden path there because actually the AI revolution is already with us now. It's in the here and now. It's not so much a question about 
the future, although social futures obviously will start to look very different as a result of AI. If you think about it, in 2019, we now live in a world that's saturated with AI, whether it's to do with you know, Google Maps or Amazon recommendations or Uber, um, talking to Siri, increasingly in our day-to-day -day lives, more and more uh, we find that large tracts of social life are increasingly given over to these kind of automated actions that we are part of, but we're also, as it were, going along for the ride. So these personal virtual assistants that we, many people increasingly find themselves talking to or at, you know, Google Home and Alexa and the rest of them, as well as chatbots that um, many people now increasingly encounter. That's an indication of one of the risks that I think is probably a more real risk rather than some of these Hollywood-inspired scenarios of killer robots. Um, so what do I mean by that? I mean that if you look at effectively how institutional life, how organisational life gets done in an office, a huge, from a sociological point of view, a huge amount of how the work gets done in an office is through talk. We talk to each other and it's through talking to each other that we actually, you know, agree contracts and agree meetings and set things up and so on and so forth. Given that we've now moved in a, into a world where people are increasingly outsourcing much of their talk to intelligent machines, you know, Google, order me a pizza, you know, Google, book me a flight, um, so on and so forth. I think one of the really interesting questions that arises is what's actually going to happen to human conversation? In the culture of AI, there's a chapter where I examine and look at the kind of um, emotional labour that goes into human conversations in office settings. So for instance, if you're um, seeking uh, a colleague to help you on a particular bit of work, you don't tend to say, you know, do that. You'll often begin by saying, did you have a nice weekend? How have you been? Or you start with some conversational pleasantry. But if you think about it with intelligent machines, we don't have to do that. We can just say, order the pizza, book the flight. So one of the questions that I'm interested in, and I think one of the really big social challenges for us as we navigate out into the 2020s and beyond, is how is that actually going to impact on how we talk to each other if we spend more time talking to intelligent machines, as well as how are we actually going to be talking to ourselves? How are we going to be narrating our lives to ourselves? So I, th I think there's a lot of very um, interesting questions there that need to be thought about and engaged with, um, and they need to be broader public engagements. We need, um, we need people to join the conversation about the politics of AI and its futures.